Um, so I want to give the floor to Mr. Vaisa Valinara. He's uh, from the University of Ulu in Finland. And uh, his thesis is uh, Design Information Secure Networks. And um, he tried to make a method to contract traffic aware security optimized software uh, based on mathematical model. So, Vaisa, welcome. And I'm really grateful that I get invitation here. I really like the conference and I really like the city of Tallinn. And I'm going to tell you about my master thesis, which I did last year to the mathematical department of University of Oulu, Finland. <coughs> and the topic of the thesis was designing information secure networks with graph theory. And the motivation for my work was that nowadays it's really hard to protect your computers from malware. If you have a big network, eventually one of the components of the network is going to get infected, and we have to think different uh, ways to protect the other components. And I try to solve this with graph theory. Uh, there are unequal components in the network that require different amount of protection. And I designed, it, designed this ASTE and network algorithm. In the, it works in the software-defined networking, and it uh, modifies the network topology so that the network is going to be more secure. And the idea is that the critical components are more protected. They are in the most protected part of the network. And it is difficult for malware to spread in the network. And there has been some previous studies that, uh, for example, the form spread is widely affected by the network topology. So if the network topology is good, the form spreads really slowly, and it can be detected, and we can protect catastrophe from happening. <coughs> but first I have to tell you something about graph theory before I can introduce my algorithm. And the graph theory was invented by Leonard Euler, this famous Swiss mathematician. The people of Königsberg asked him that is it possible to walk through all the seven bridges of Königsberg exactly one time and return to the starting point. And here you can see the picture of seven bridges of Königsberg. And Euler drove this graph. And in a graph, there is a vertex set and an edge set. <coughs> and in this picture, the edges are the bridges of Königsberg and the vertices are the islands. But in the computer network, of course, the computer computers and routers and databases are the vertices, and the edges are the links between those components. And so, what do you think? It is possible to walk through all those bridges, exactly one and return to the starting point? No, no, it isn't possible. The Euler have this really nice proof that said it isn't possible. <coughs> it's actually, this kind of walk is actually called the Euler's path, and paths are really useful components of graph. A path is a row of distinct connected vertices. And we say that two paths are edge independent if they don't share an edge. And we say that two vertices are connected to each other if there exists a path between them. And we say that the graph is connected if there exists a path between each of the vertices of the network. And if there actually exists one edge between each of the network components, then we can say that it's a complete graph or a full graph. And a tree is just this special kind of graph. It's really useful. It's a connected acyclic graph, meaning that there isn't any paths there that could form a circle. And a spanning tree, on the other hand, is, is a tree that contains all the vertices of a graph. And trees have really useful properties, and they are used a lot of in different algorithms because of their uh, structure. And we know that every connected graph contains a spanning tree. This is really useful. I'm not going to prove it here because I don't think there are any mathematicians here who would be interested. But uh, we also can put weights on the edges of the network, which would be like the cost of using this, this connection. And if there are weights in the network, then we can find a minimum spanning tree, which is a spanning tree that contains the edges with the smallest weight. 
Here you can see a picture of a spanning tree. It's bolded. So as you can see, every edge has a weight. And the spanning tree contains the uh, edges with the smallest weight, so that every component is connected by the spanning tree. And there are a couple of good algorithms to find, find the minimum spanning tree. There are Kruskal's algorithm and Brim's algorithm, for example. And we can measure the connectivity of, of a network with graph properties. For example, edge connectivity number tells what's the minimum number of edges that can be removed from the graph that is still remains connected. And a good point vertex is that kind of component that if you remove it from the network, it will immediately become disconnected. Uh, Non-separable graph is a graph that is connected and doesn't contain any uh, good point vertices. And it is possible to remove vertices from the graph with vertice shrinking so that it connectivity level will remain the same. Here you can see example of vertex shrinking. Vertices 7 and 9 have been shrinked to new, new one called V. And <coughs> what it, why did I do this algorithm? Because nowadays there is this new kind of network management paragraph called software defined networking. Uh, the SDN provides a software layer on the top of the physical infrastructure, enabling control plane functions distinct from the data plane. Uh, the data plane still resides on the switch, while routing decisions are moved to a separate controller. That kind of networks are easier to optimize, and their structure can be changed in an instant. And the basic idea is that we separate the brains and the muscles and can control the network with different kind of algorithm. <coughs> and there have been a lot, lot of research about this kind of networks, and in the future there will be a lot of use for them. <coughs> and when we use graph as a data network, uh, vertices are the component of a graph, like computers, routers, databases, and the edges are the allowed connections between those components. And we should put security value for each of the network component. There have been a lot of research about what kind of security value should be used, and I didn't, that wasn't the main topic of my uh, thesis, but there have been some studies, so we can put the security value to the components. And then each edge should have a traffic value that we can get from the previous traffic. The SDN uses open flow. And from that and the link history tree, we can get some values which indicate that which components uh, communicate a lot. And we want to put them close to each other. And here you can see different kind of network topologies. For example, there is a tree, which I mentioned, and the fully connected graph, and some other kind of graphs. And we want to make those networks secure. And what is information security? Information security wants to stop the uh, stealing and destruction and modification of the data. But of course, the information must be available for those who has a permission to access it, the honest parties. And I use these security values and weight values to help to improve the network topology so that components, critical components are protected, but the traffic still flows well. <coughs> and how do we decide the security levels and the traffic weights? I think that the traffic weights have to be a real values between zero and one, and the amount of the security parameters depends on the complexity of the network, but I think that five is a very good number for normal network. So the component which is most important has the security level one. And if there are some machines that are probably going to get infected, they should have the security level five. And when we start my algorithm, which I call twin trees, the first thing that we do, we count new edge weights from the endpoints of every network component. 
So for example, if there is a component with security level one and component with security level five, then we subtract those values, get a four, and then we add that to the edge weight. So that edge is going to be really heavy, and it is not going to be used in the minimum spanning tree. And when the ASD and network starts, immediately we can think that all the components are connected. But that kind of network is really reliable, but I don't think it's really secure because the malware can easily spread to every, every machine. So we want to reduce the amount of connections. And this uh, my algorithm, which I call twin trees, uh, it will use the new edge weights to find a minimum spanning tree in the network. And now we have a tree. It's secure, but I don't think it's not very reliable because if any of the edges is broken, if any of the connections is uh, removed, then the network becomes immediately disconnected. It's not good. So we have to find a second minimum spanning tree, which is going to be independent with the first one. Then we can combine these two trees and get a network which is two edge connected, meaning that there are two independent paths from every vertex to all other vertices, and it's a useful property. And we are going to use this security parameter to balance the security levels and the traffic flows, that who we think is more important. If the security parameter is chosen to be uh, same as the security levels minus one, then they both are balanced. But if the security parameter is small, then the security is more important, and the network will become more segmented. But if we choose a higher security parameter, then the traffic flows data is more important, and it will take that more. It will make the traffic flows more important in the topology. <coughs> and here you can see the pseudocode of my algorithm. Uh, twin trees. It takes faked graph with security levels and security parameter S. And it starts by counting new edge weights for every edge. As you can see there, the P. <coughs> ah, it's not working. It's working, it's working. Ah, OK. So <coughs> here we count the new edge weights. Here is the traffic. traffic which is between zero and one. Here is the security levels of the endpoints. We subtract, subtract them from each other, and then we divide it by the security parameter. So if the security parameter is small, then this is becomes more important. But if it's big, then th this isn't so important, and the traffic flow is going to be more important in the new edge weights. And after that, we can find a minimum spanning tree, either with Kruskal's or Prim's algorithm. Then we find another one, which is edge independent with the first one. Then we combine them. I get this new network, which is more secure than what we started from. <coughs> and here is an example picture of this random network, which I made with MATLAB. <coughs> Every node has a security value, which shows randomly from one to five. It has totally 10 vertices, and the traffic values are randomly chosen. And after we execute my algorithm, we get this result. Uh, here you can see this is the most important node of the network. It has the security level 1, and it's only connected to the uh, components with security level 2. And here is the uh, component with security level 5, meaning that it's probably going to get infected, and it's only connected to the, uh, these with level four. So if this gets infected, it's difficult to spread from here. And I used security parameter four, meaning that the security and traffic flows are balanced. If you choose smaller value, then the network is going to become more segmented. But I think that this is quite good network. It was randomly created and become like this. And now we can 
so analyze the results of the algorithm as you saw in the picture. The algorithm make the network segmented. And because of this segmentation, it takes a lot of time for malware to spread from uh, the infected parts to the critical parts. And hopefully it will be detected before that and the catastrophe can be stopped. Uh, and because we are using SDN networks, we want to use Prim's algorithm because it's a lot faster in when there are a lot of ed edges. And in software-defined networks, we can think that it's fully connected. And what results did we get? As I said, the algorithm reconstru reconstructs complete graph to two edge connected graphs. And for software-defined networking, this is really excellent feature. Every vertex is connected to every other vertex with two independent paths. And you can remove any edge from the network so that it will remain connected. And after you remove edge, you can always uh, run the algorithm again, so it will reconstruct a new network. So you can do this one edge at a time and uh, modify the network as you want, and it always remain connected. So it's possible to remove any edge there without breaking the network. And of course, the networks are usually uh, non-separable, so you can remove any infected component there also. And in the case there is a good point vertex, you can always use vertex shrinking, and the two edge connectivity makes sure that the uh, network will remain connected even while you are doing shrinking or other properties of the graph. <coughs> And here are the conclusion of my results, my thesis. So if you have paid any attention, you will know that the main result was this algorithm, twin trees. Uh, it modifies the software defined networks to be more secure and reliable because of the segmentation and security levels. Uh, it makes malware propagation really difficult and slow. And the idea is the most valuable parts of the network are going to be protected. And the traffic still flows smoothly. And <coughs> it seems that I was too fast, but no. <laughs> thank you for your attention. And I will answer any questions if you have. Thank you. Thank you, Raisa. <laughs> Thank you. So on, on behalf of the good and the bad and the ugly, and we'll find out which is which soon. Um, thank you for a good presentation. Thank you for interesting some work, but um, let's talk about some details. Um, first, would you like to comment on the scalability of this solution? I mean, it's one thing to do a uh, calculation with 10 nodes. What about 10,000 nodes? I have tried that, and it works well. Uh, that's why I decided to use Prim's algorithm, because when I use it with node like uh, over a thousand uh, components, then there was time difference, so it, to optimize the network in Prim algorithm took maybe uh, five minutes and Kruskal algorithm seven minutes. So if the network is, is complicated, then it will take some time. But of course I was using my laptop, so if you have a real good computer, time isn't any issue. Okay, thank you. Um, you also want to have basically at least two paths from every every node. Yes. Um, that includes the end nodes, right? Yes. Um, so, so in your thesis, the end node does that also mean, let's say, a computer connected to something? In the yes. End? Not just networks, as more abstract. Yeah, it it can be computer or it can be network. It, so it can be used on small networks or l larger networks. Okay, so does this assume that uh, each of those computers has two network interfaces? Hmm? So in, in order to have two paths, does this assume you, you actually have two physical paths? Uh, let's say you have two network cards, there's a cable coming out of one, uh, and maybe a, a wireless connection coming out, out of the other. Yes, yes. Uh, if you want to have that every node is a computer, and then you have to have, that's true. But of course, you can think also that the nodes are routers and uh, for different kinds of small networks. Right. Yeah. Routers, I don't see a problem. But end devices, 
uh, let's say your tablet perhaps, um, you might have a difficulty fulfilling that uh, assumption. Yeah, true. I've been uh, thinking that probably this is going to be used in some big uh, industrial network, for example. Right. So I, I can fully see the value of this on the core side. Uh, it's just that this um, requirement on the end uh, was kind of puzzling for me, but thank you. Um, also, you have this concept of distance and security values in there. Um, and, and I found it a bit strange because when I would you know, immediately, you know, if I hear a security value, uh, my first instinct would say that, uh, okay, that means how secure or how difficult to break this specific node is. Uh, whereas you look at you know, how valuable yes. this node is. Um, but of course, if there's any sense that valuable nodes have also the greatest security. But not, not always true, but let's hope so. <laughs> um, but the point I'm trying to make here is that um, if you have a lot of distance but very weak security in between, that, that is much worse than having very short distance, you know, connected directly for it perhaps. But if you have a you know, very strong firewall rules in the middle that don't, don't allow you to do anything, uh, then that probably is better uh, in terms of preventing malware spreading. Uh, any, any thoughts on this? Yeah, there, for example, wherever you go from different level to another, there could be a firewall between them. It would be a good idea to have also firewalls in the network, not only the topology. Okay, um, so that, that basically would be my, my ending comment here. Um, if, if you continue work on this uh, algorithm, then perhaps you, you may want to look at the, let's say, the resilience or, or toughness uh, of the nodes, because it actually would change how the graph uh, would look like, I think. Yeah. All right, but thank you. Ryan, you're yeah. the best. So yeah. I'll just ask quickly, an easy one. Uh, the, the, um, what, what is your plans for, say, the next year? Um, are you going to take this research into practical, more practical direction, or you have a, a target enterprise network or that you can work on? No, well, in my company, VDT, there has been some, my colleagues are studying the SDI networks and they're building SDI routers. So when we are going to have some test environment, we are going to test this algorithm in a real environment and see how it works. But <coughs> so one, one of the um, goals of the session also is to recruit some of the good students. So uh, your work, I think uh, it's an, this combination of mathematics and security. It's something that it's uh, uh, a point of view that is very interesting. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, let's see. So um, we're okay? Okay, some of the um, audience maybe have a question. Well, I know, I know you have. Okay. So. Okay, we can. This. Yes. Can you tell something about uh, how did you test this and what kind of uh, networks were there? Well, I used MATLAB. Uh, I made this code that makes random networks and then choose the security values there and random traffic. And of course, I would have pictures of bigger networks, but you wouldn't see any of those numbers because they were really big. So that's why I choose this little network as an example. But I have tested it in many networks and they usually look really nice. And of course, you can change the security parameter and get different kind of results. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Well, can you also share the complication of the algorithm? How, how it is N, N double, how the complexity of uh, the algorithm? Mm. Um, Excuse me? The O number. Uh, <coughs> According to the prim. Yeah, I, it seems that I took it away here. I don't remember it. <laughs> but the, <coughs> yeah, it's not 
in, in the slides anymore. I'm sorry. Okay, that. that'd be right. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. So maybe I'm the bad one. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Vaza, for your presentation. Also, we have some of the uh, good, nice caps to remember from here. Thank you for being here. Thank you. It was my pleasure. <laughs> okay.